Hey everybody, it's I, Dragon Zero. I'm back at it again with another interview for the first time in almost five or six years. So, yeah, I'm here with... Danny. Oh, the phone oh, fell. Sorry, it's I, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Never without a botch, as they say. But like, yeah, man. Um, so, I've, been, I've known you for quite a while, actually. I used to follow you on Instagram. I think we were friends on Facebook for a while, but... Yeah, man, tell me a little bit about yourself so you know and what you've been doing. Oh, uh, dude, uh... I'm an actor. Uh, I, I've been currently doing a lot of theater work. Uh, I kind of stepped away from on-camera auditions. Okay. Uh, literally just finished working on my series finale, Galactic Chronicles. And it's okay. going to be uh, showing in panel room C today at 3. Okay, yeah. cool, cool, man. That's going to be really sick. I might actually try to make it there, you awesome. know? Awesome, thank you. So, I would um, appreciate that. Yeah, man. <laughs> Like, I'm such a big fan of Indy Tokusatsu, you know? I believe Indy Tokusatsu allows the craft to be harnessed by fans in order to keep the tradition alive, you and know? Dude, the beauty, the beauty about the Power Ranger fandom, especially, is, is the brand. The brand, like, they give us all access to, you know, free A and mm -hmm. not copyright us so exactly, much. Exactly, exactly, so you know? Because it's what's keeping the brand alive yeah, now because really we exactly. don't know what's going on with Hasbro, you know? So that's why we, I think it's very important for us as fans to be able to make our own fan films as well as just continue the love of tokusatsu yeah, in general, you know? Like, or, like um, there's a lot of indie tokusatsu in Japan. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you we often see that with a lot of these... Um, any hero, you know, and I would love to see some more like a Japanese and American indie toku cross over, you know that what would I mean? Be like, so cool, dude. But cause there's a lot of directors on Facebook, you know, who are big fans. Well, you know, like Kyoichi Sakamoto, you know, like he started here doing Power Rangers, and his you can see his cinematography and just like the camera actions, you know. Oh, yeah, and so. He, was, he did a lot of Power Rangers, like SPD and all that, and then after that... I think that, he did some MMPR as well, I yeah. think. I, um, I don't know my um, the right timeline. I think he got to start there as well. So. Dude, and then he flew to Japan and started directing Super Sentai. Yeah, and Dude. he does an amazing yeah, job. it's so great. And it's then so great. we've recently been having a lot of directors coming over, like Kyotaka Taguchi from Ultraman, you know? Mm -hmm. And he sometimes they have him do Sentai and Rider episodes. And yeah. he, he's like like legit like a great director and like he made like Ultraman like popular again because he was making good toys as well like he's a writer and a director and like you, you gotta like and look see, and that's the thing is that like this collaboration between Japan and America mm -hmm. because like American Toku is like powering yeah that's what people know you know but like that collaboration of going back and forth mm -hmm. is, is a, it's a really great friendship because you know like that's the reason we have power. <laughs> exactly, and we're like we're we're getting more indie yeah. tokusatsu over the past like uh, would you say like five years maybe? Yeah, like I want to say that you know like I wouldn't say I'm a pioneer of it, mm -hmm. but you know I was definitely in the beginning, and there was not a lot of us. You yeah, know? and now you know I'm hosting you know like the the fan film contest you okay. know, and it's like it's nice to see <laughs> some of these guys saying you know like ah. Uh, I saw what you did and I want to do it. It's, it's getting that inspiration, you know. For sure. And it's great to see the creative juices of just like people that it's, get inspired by what they see on TV, you know. For sure, yeah, no, and I like, I like, I don't know if you remember Garage Hero from like 10 years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, that yeah. guy, that, I think that was the first ever official American Toku, like yeah. completely original with no, like, um, or Battle Hero. I, I don't Dude, know. It's so or, true. Yeah, I don't know what exactly it was, but yeah, like that guy started it for almost everybody in the U.S., you know, and just made it like to the point where, okay, there's something here for Americans to make that pays tribute to the Japanese to yeah. and then, you know, make it in our own by using CGI and stuff, because, you know, we don't like have access to like right. special so like, effects, like, 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 like all the VFX practical, there, right? yeah, yeah, no, like, um, but, more practical effects too. Yeah, yeah, like, I'm a big fan of practical, but I understand why um, American or like, um, Indian won't be able to use it because it is expensive. It's super expensive. Why I work and see that that's the other thing is that you know, like, when you're doing like professional shoots, you know, mm -hmm. you're paying for permits paying for insurance and sometimes the insurance is way more than paying for a yeah permit. because it is a, a, an amateur production exactly. so therefore they want to like make you like pay higher exactly. premium to and then once you start adding practical effects and mm -hmm. things like that now it's uh, 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 a safety hazard you exactly know? And, and you got to have a fire marshal exactly. on board always that because that's 
like a number one rule. And they have passed actually recently too, if I'm not mistaken, the law to make sure there's always a fire marshal on set. And that's like, to ensure that nobody ever gets hurt, you know, because, you know, it's a lot of, with the death incident, you know, you gotta have, like safety is always a, a big concern, it especially should with It always be a priority, but you know, like us indie filmmakers, mm -hmm. we don't have that kind of money. You know? Yeah, and and, like, and and I feel like when it's 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 things like that, you shouldn't get discouraged to doing what you before. love. You know, yeah, like, don't let that be the oh well, I can't get my creative juices flowing anymore because I don't have money. You know, for sure. Like I like I often see a lot of crowdfunding stuff. You know, yeah. and like. I like some of the stuff are pretty successful when they crop them, and then you got some like buzz, you know. But I think it's just because you know, like I don't think they were, I think they were expecting more than they what could they could have worked with, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. if you like you're doing it's the same, maybe try to like look into something like, okay, let's try to see if we can make it a little like try to like make it a little bit, um, you know, less, right. you know, if we gotta like use some sneakier um, a tactic or yeah. not like illegal, but more like. Um, just making Find a, a way around it. Exactly, right? yeah. exactly. Work around that and make it all still look really cool, you know what I mean? Like old school camera, like the first like yeah, twenty episodes, you know, that's like that's that's some good top tier like indie filmmaking, yeah. you know. Like if I ever like talk to like a mini film and I always say look at the first episode of Common Rider. That period is legit how like the passion was there and oh, it showed. Yeah. And it and showed. And I've always wondered what Shotaro Ishinomori would have thought about mm -hmm. these um, people paying tribute to him years later, you know, like, because I know he was disappointed about the um, Kamen Rider adoption over here in the U.S. And I wish he would have seen Dragon Knight, but, like, you know, I feel like he would have enjoyed what Dragon they did, you know, so. so and it, it sucks that we um, haven't been able to get a, le a legal version of it, you know, so. What, well, you know... Common Rider and Super Sentai are now being licensed, like, yeah. specifically with English subtitles. Mm -hmm. You know, so there might be a future for it. You know, for sure. And same with Ultraman as well. Ultraman's free on yeah. YouTube, which Dude, is actually Ultraman like, just had a Netflix film. Yeah, you know, like that's so huge. And it's going like you it's know? like legit becoming as big as Power yeah. Rangers, which is awesome because we need yeah. more Tokyo. Like, exactly. And like a lot of these big directors, James Gunn. Um, uh, some other ones that are big fans of Koku. I think I'm, oh, I'm Dave. I'm Dave Filoni is a big yeah. fan, like massive Godzilla fan and stuff. So of course he would like Tokusatsu as well in general, like Ten Time Rider. It's awesome. And, token, and I think that's yeah. why um, he went to Japan and got Godzilla minus one. And they're talking. So I think they're gonna like potentially be able to bring down. That'd be so great. Well, that we need that. We need so more great. Japanese directors. We yeah, need more American yeah. directors Just over there doing Tokusatsu. Mind you, dude. Godzilla minus one. One of the best Godzilla films out there. It, and I think it's the best film of 2023. Oh yeah, for like, sure. Like 100 percent. Like I liked it way more than Godzilla and Kong. Oh no, yeah, yeah no, no. Godzilla and Kong gets the fun. Like yeah. it's like an eight out of ten. It's, fun. it's a it's a fun Hollywood film. You know? Yeah, but Godzilla yeah. minus one though. Yeah. Great God tier, yeah. like God yeah. tier, and I don't say that often. And then we had Shin Ultraman, Shin Kamen Rider. I was like, come on, give me more. <laughs> we need Shin Super Sentai within the next few years. Next year it's the 50-year anniversary, yeah. and that's crazy. It's one of the longest-running kids shows of all time, you know, like yeah. in Japan and in America. So I'm really happy that they're still continuing it. I want them to go all out, all out. It's fans that like you, bro, and I, and you know, like everybody here that keeps this alive. You know? For sure, man. And, just, and, and that's the thing too. It's like whenever they release anything, you know. Super Sentai, Kamen Rider, Ultraman. We have to go and support. Exactly, you know? like we and like when they don't like give it to us like legally, you know, it makes it hard for. Because a lot of them do want to. See, and that's the thing too is that like I think that's why they're taking the initiative in like mm -hmm. licensing English subtitles yeah. and showing it in like Amazon Prime or, sure. or um, uh, Netflix. Netflix. Uh, shout out because they're noticing us now. They mm -hmm. see. Oh my gosh, there's an American audience that likes this. Yeah. Let's cater to them. And for sure, and with Power Rangers not really having anything going on, right. sadly, you right. know, this is going to be their way to step in yeah. and be like, hey, you like Power Rangers? Just Let's more. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You want to see some good storytelling? Like, for example, King Oger. That was... Like, I'm one still of, not done with it. <laughs> oh, dude, you're going to love the last 10 episodes. But, yeah, dude, I... I so many great things it's like and 
Sentai is still cooking with yeah, Boom Boom Zero. Like, oh man, I've been watching that too. Dude, so it's much so fun. fun dude, I love so Boom Boom Zero. So like, that's, that's the thing is that, you know, like, for whatever it is, Power Rangers got titled, you know, oh, it's a kid's show, you know? Mm -hmm. And because of that, it also, the discovery of like Super Sentai, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, oh, well, it's Power Rangers. But it's like, yeah. no, don't judge it because of what you've seen as Power Rangers, definitely give it a chance because it's it's such great storytelling. For sure. It's, and it's the source material. Exactly. You know? And like kids, um, like a lot of kids these days, they like feel you like that. They like, they like to binge watch and see these arcs develop over time and time again. And we only started getting that in Sentai, I think with a bit of Kiwa Major and then Denkaiju and then um, Don Brothers. Yeah, 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 I will agree. It, but it was also because of COVID as yeah, well. But, yeah. you know. But that's the thing, and they yeah. worked through it. Exactly. They and made they it their own. And they got their own version of the volume as well yeah. over there, which is absolutely incredible. Cause, and that's how King Oger came to be. And King Oger was like legit broke a yeah. lot of trope of the Sin Time, which is absolutely incredible. Oh, yeah. And it all became, you, a, and you can see it in like the first like few episodes where it's like, exactly. what is this? Yeah, no, this is not what we watched yeah. like last year. No, like this is like something good, new. You it was know, new, reinvented. Uh, they use virtual sets too, mm -hmm. and that was like the first time ever. You know, they used Mandalorian technology yeah, and made and it their own. For sure, so yeah, and it's, I think it was done by Sony, I believe, and I think also Toho, it might, I, from what I've heard, I think they're also investing in doing something like that as well, you know, so, yeah, like, because, like, in Japan, they're able to make, like, these effects that look like 20 million, 30 million dollars, be cost of, like, 3 to 5 million, because that's what Godzilla Minus 1 budget was, and absolutely incredible i'm like shocked and how dude, they hardly use any visual effects exactly there's like, there were so many shots that were practical and one of the biggest things is that they like what you saw in the ocean in godzilla minus one mm -hmm. most of it was cg but they oh, were sure. really on water oh yeah no godzilla like they they cgi godzilla but i'm pretty yeah. sure they put like a green screen boat or something yeah. and made it seem that he was started which Beautiful, well, you beautiful gotta stuff. admit that's like yeah. incredible yeah. how off and I hope that us indie toku people we could also potentially learn from them maybe if they did a class or something you know explaining that's these true. shows you know well, like dude, the director was legit a VFX artist yeah, like, yeah no and like he had to, so my friend who lived in Japan um he was telling me that he did a show a movie called Kamikaze and it was also very effects heavy you know and like a lot of people really enjoy that film and just seeing him make a big splash over here yeah. and getting attention to a big, big director, you know, be like, teach us, like, how do we make effect with that pricing and making more, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, see, a lot of that stuff, too, is like, you know, most of these people went to school for those things, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, a lot of the stuff I do here, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's what I learned in college, you know, how to do the VFX and for sure. you know, script writing and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, most of these VFX artists, you know, that's what they do. They visit schools and they give their two senses. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's it's one of those things where you have to have a passion for Exactly. You know? And um, like, if Marvel and DC and Star Wars were to look at these things, you know, take the time. It's, it's fine if we have to wait a couple of years. You know, don't rush your visual effect artist. Don't yeah. make them burn out, make yeah. them hate the craft, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, take the time, like, to be on the Spider-Verse, they would have an issue, but then when people heard about it, they actually pull back and like, you know what, yeah. we're going to chill out, we're going to let our vid, um, vid artists do their thing, you know what I mean? And I think that's a great thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah because like, a lot happens behind the scenes. Exactly. You know, I, I worked for a big studio for, like, a few years, mm -hmm. and sometimes the studios don't care, man. Yeah, and they it's They overwork the artists, you know. And that's why, like, when you're watching a film, like, I like sitting through the credits. Same. Because I'm just like, dude, there's more people behind these credits that didn't make it into the credits, For sure. you know? Yeah, no, 100%. And, and but I know um, there's one film where they were taking people out of the credits and stuff, which is, like, really sad, you know? You yeah. don't do that, you know? Give them what they worked on, you know? Yeah. That's, like, something that's very, um, 
like very packed. Everybody and everybody puts, and that's the thing is that like, especially doing like indie stuff like I do, you know, or guerrilla style, mm-hmm. is the fact that you learn to appreciate everybody that's there working with you. For sure. Because they're all there because they believe in your vision. Exactly. You know? and, and, and I appreciate that a lot from like the, all the people I work with, you know, it's that like, they're here, I think my idea is ridiculous, mm-hmm. but they're here and they don't yeah. think it's ridiculous. And you're putting it out to the world so that yeah. people could still be able to yeah. watch. But you like you never know. Somebody might see it and be like, you yeah. know, this is like the coolest fucking thing ever, you know? <laughs> and like they would absolutely love that type yeah. of thing, you know? And like, yeah man. And also like I mean, it's not to change subject man, but I like I heard like I've seen that your brother as well is like a big fan of that type of oh, stuff yeah, as dude. well. My brother you know? is one of the biggest reasons why I still do this and love this, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, he's the one that I stopped watching mm-hmm. because he kept watching. I was like, what are you watching, bro? Let me sit mm-hmm. down with you. And it's 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 a bonding experience. Did he ever watch Sentai and Kamen Rider and Ultraman? He or? does. He okay. does when I watch it, but he doesn't get what's going For on. For sure, yeah, no, like, but, uh, maybe you could show him the Ultraman dub, because they're actually doing dubs now. Which okay. Is, like, really cool. Like, they had their own English channel. They're oh, doing them. Wow. Um, so they're doing Ultraman Arc, and they also did Blazar last year. Okay. And I think with the new um, like um, licensing, I think they're gonna also maybe do some of the older stuff as well, uh, from like Tiga, um, Dinah, and Gaia, maybe even some old school, like old Leo, um, Taro. I think that would be really like I think with those does, I think you could be able to bring that would be like so help cool. them out a lot with the kids, you know? Cause like Ultraman, like. Ultraman was legit a dead series, like yeah, no dude. less like here. 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 Yeah, here no, even in dead. Japan in 2012 and 2013, um, when Ultraman Ginga, they were only do like the last show that they ever did was um Ultraman Mebia before that, and okay. they took like they had like a little short theory called a Mega Monster Movie Battle or whatever. Mm-hmm. That was the only like Ultra series technically, but no Ultraman showed up. So Ginga was the first new chronicle oh, hero. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I and I, <laughs> yeah, Ginga is actually really, um, like, Ginga is a little bit slow, like, yeah. the first series, but I love Ginga S. A lot of people didn't like it, but I liked it, because it brought, um, Ultraman back to the forefront, you know what I mean? And led to Ultraman X, Ultraman, um, Orb, Zed, all these great, great Tokusatsu shows, you know, with Ultraman, you know? So, yeah, like... Well, see, dude, that's, that's the thing, is that, like, you really don't know where a show is or mm-hmm. where your project's going to take you and a lot of the times with these companies that's what it is you know exactly. they, they, they produce a product present it to the audience but they don't know if it's going to be working exactly and like they don't and you can't get a test audience you know right. in case they right. get spoilers you know like you have to basically get like a trusted like people you know to be like hey can you take a look at this film and see what you think you know so like and I've always like been like I'm you know like I did an interview with them. Um, I don't know if you know the Immortal Red Fox who were at a yes. Yeah, yes, so yes, I yes. interviewed Matthew a couple of years ago at okay. Mortal Kombat Express, and that was a really um cool experience because I'm a bit like they were the ones who kind of like during COVID, you know, they brought that into like indie more Tokusatsu indie films, you know, and I love seeing that, you know, and I look like you know and like you doing your own theory, that's really cool, you know, with the um. The Rock Ranger, what was the series called again? The, the series is called Galactic Chronicles. Okay, Galactic yeah. Chronicles, okay. It's, um, uh, it's basically, I take the concept of Lost Galaxy, and uh, you know, there's a lot of Lost Galaxy that didn't get explained. Mm-hmm. And Lost Galaxy is one of my favorite seasons, so I am not sure. talking bad about it. But there's a lot of stuff that didn't get explained. Like the first episode, we see a portal, you know, yeah. and Maya goes right through it, and is in the moon. You know, with, with Leo and Kendricks, mm-hmm. and she has to go back to save her people. Yeah. And then this is where the team becomes, the For Lost sure. Galaxy. But they never explain what that portal came from, yeah. what happened, or anything. And then the Galaxy book gets discovered, mm-hmm. and I guess they read a section of it, and they open a portal to enter the Lost Galaxy. How do you get out? They literally exactly, read the like, book backwards and opens the portal so they can exit the Lost Galaxy. Sure. So I'm here like, wow, okay, so was this book the reason these portals existed? It never got explained. After they exit the Lost Galaxy, the book disappears. Damn, and that's why I want them to do, like, 
so when, um, when it comes to um, like comics and stuff, because that's uh-huh. like the only power in thing they're doing. Yeah. I want to see them do content on um, continuation. And you that's know? one of my biggest pet peeves with the comic books. Yeah. Uh, see, so I took that concept and I was like, I'm exploring it in mm-hmm. my my own fan fiction. You exactly. Know? Uh, and, 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 and these these comic books, you know, they're all being written by fans. Yeah. Uh, but they're all just... In a different universe. Either a different universe or, yeah, this is the canon timeline, but let's explore what these characters did when they weren't present. And I'm here like, but we already have the episodes. Exactly. You know? So they're off doing, like, I think it's what, uh, uh, Zach, uh, Jason, and Trini, they leave. Mm-hmm. And, for the peace conference. For the peace conference, you know? Mm-hmm. But then they become Power Rangers again. And I'm yeah. here like, it took so long for Zordon and Alpha to create the White Ranger. Yeah. So like, they're Power Rangers. Okay, so what happens when, our, in our continuity, the Thunder yeah. Swords and stuff are being destroyed? How come they didn't come back and, like, how about? For sure, yeah, I, I mean. Well, I mean, you know, I didn't really read the comics. I just know sure, that that's what happened, so I'm just, like, speculating. But I'm just like, why aren't we getting involved in those characters? You know, why yeah. didn't we just do like the once and always, but in a comic book form where yeah, you can actually like, have all these characters talking and stuff? For sure, because some of these um, actors are no longer with us, you know? Yeah. And like, there's like, that, um, or uh, there's there's the there's the fact of like um, um, and just some of them don't even want to come back exactly. because they're not paying them well enough. Or you know? they were just treated badly on yeah. that, you know? Yeah, and it's just really sad. To see all these, like a lot of people want them to come back, and right. they're like, "Hey, come back!" You know, and they're like, "Yeah, like it's you not know." For me anymore. Yeah, and like and it's sad too because yeah. a lot of people still love their performance at indie shows. You and know, dude, like Japan, like they're still celebrating their anniversaries. And yeah, the past all comes dude, back and we've been so having great. so many anniversary movies yeah. this past three years. Yeah, Conquer First, Ranger, Decker Ranger, Abba know. Ranger, yeah, Abba Ranger, Hurricane. And Hurricane. Ranger. It's incredible, and, and I'm, shocked they got, back, you know? I, I'm shocked they got. I'm shocked they got Cochran. I'm in an interview. I'm in an interview right yeah, now. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Um, yeah, but like, no, man, it's just really um cool seeing like all these actors coming back for us for yeah. 20, 30 years, you know. And I want it. I'm hoping that they'll do some 80s stuff as well, and like maybe. Yeah. Maybe some of the Go Rangers, even though some of them are no longer with yeah. us, you know, maybe they can do like in universe explanation, or maybe you can get a younger Sentai actress. Well, dude, Japan does it so well. They yeah. literally have them come back and like do a voiceover, you mm-hmm. know, with somebody else. And they, but it's the same respect, you know, mm-hmm. like Aqua Red still gets treated with that respect. That exactly, and that respect over here is not really given by production yeah. companies, exactly. you know, because exactly. you know a lot of these actors. I don't think they're on like SAG or yeah. um, any of the um, um, guild, you know, and like yeah. because Power Rangers was for the longest time a non gilded show, you know, yeah. like it made it difficult to yeah. find, to get these actors back, you know, as well. And that's why I think hopefully if, if it ever comes back, it'll be like in Canada or maybe back in California, maybe, you know, to make it like if they have to like, if they, if they make it cheaper, um, just have them like, you know, like guild, have guild members, you know. And then all these actors could come back, you know, and like, if we have to like fundraise it or something, or just have something like... But see, that's the other thing too, is that, you know, a bunch of people have done fundraisers for projects yeah. in the Power Ranger community. I I don't like touching that basis because a lot of these people just disappear. You know, sure, they yeah. don't do anything. And I feel like that also gives the fandom a bad reputation because mm-hmm. it's like, you know, we all believe in you. We're, Investing, like I'm a big fan of like if you shot the movie already and it's already out, but you say, hey, um, if you want to help us recoup the cost of this movie, you yeah. know, and like potentially see some of these other rangers and stuff. In fact, here's some of the um, fan made rangers right now, actually. If I meant, mind if I switch to them, yeah, I see them from on challenge. Say hello, yeah. So, yeah, no, like, so these original rangers are like. Absolutely incredible, you know. Like, and it's so cool seeing all these guys continuing their own stories in their own universe, you know. Because um, right now, as we speak, we're in a multiverse like stage right now. We're multiple universes. People are loving the um, multi um, universes um, stories. Yeah. 
and it allows for different stuff to be told and I absolutely love that you know so and I, I would love to maybe see you um, your series maybe cross over with somebody like around you know maybe do like a um a universal crossover because I feel like I, I honestly have an idea for that it's just one of those things I have to like properly like write mm-hmm. down and plan out yeah. um, especially because you know like everybody that I've known always wants to like work with me and stuff mm-hmm. so I, I have this idea in my head where I'm going to open that to working with other you know cosplayers and or aspiring actors for you sure. know wow it's evil Kimberly for Sorry. sure. Yeah, maybe make it into a, like a superhero tie then, you know, because yeah. yeah. they did one um, a couple of years ago with Red Sox yeah. and um, a Jamminger and a few others. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what, right. That's like, right. I'm, I'm shocked they're not here, though, you know, the Jamminger. Yeah. yeah, I would love that. I would have loved to see them again, you know, so. But yeah, like, I just, I would like, Indie Tokyo, man, it's like it's a tight knit community. Yeah, let's, man. Let's, it, it really is, you know, um, but I'm glad we're all doing it. I, you know, Everybody has their creative juices, and it's nice to see the difference in creativity. You For know? sure, yeah, no, and it allows all these creators to work together and come up with a multi, like a, a solution, you know, and like you know, like, and maybe Hasbro might even bring some of y'all on. Uh, do like, that would be so cool, <laughs> dude. <laughs> if would, Hasbro were to call me to be like, "Yo, we want to work with you," yeah, let's do it. So yeah, if, if, if it ideas. means keeping the like, if, like the brand alive, you know. Yeah. Do it like you know, like y'all legit will keep like the fandom, you know, like yeah. they, you probably won't be able to get on TV, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But maybe have it be on YouTube because the official, yeah. yeah, you know, like they're doing what Ultraman was doing, if yeah. they're doing so, it was absolutely incredible, you know, and like and they could they couldn't do that, but yeah, they are, and that's yeah. I, I call that super like super special, you know, we yeah. are very because very they, happy. they're noticing the fandom, you know, mm-hmm. and they're catering to the fandom exactly. and that's, that's the beauty of it. like the fandom is such an important yeah. part and that's how they gain their money that's how they get right. their budget back you know right. and it's just so cool just seeing all these like fans coming together be like I love this show yeah. man I love this well, I mean that's why we're here for sure you know, that's why we're here at Power Morphicon you know yeah and like it's my first time coming to the California convention it's also my first time in California wow. so yeah no because I'm from Texas I'm a Texas guy you know so you know Dude. You should check out more Phenomenal Expo. Yeah, yeah, Texas. I'm actually planning to go next yeah. year, actually, right. like, because um, they're just slowly growing, but, you know, yeah. I'm down to help them. If they, oh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big music guy, so if they want to bring some musical guests, I'm their guy who to help the MC the guests, you know, and, like, maybe even get a band, you That'd know. Because, uh, like, right. I love, like, music, you know, so I'm always, I've, I've been a singer for seven years, uh-huh. you know, or um, more than that, but, like, singing Tokusatsu songs for 10 years. Um, so, I mean, I, like rock song for twelve, you know. It's, it's really cool. I love singing, and I always like, you know, like a lot of these, like uh, even the music is becoming available in the U.S. as well. Like we got Sentai last year. Dude, it, it's so crazy to see that you can look up on Instagram if you're, you know, uploading a story mm-hmm. or anything. You can pick a Super Sentai song. Exactly, it's and, so it, and including in the insert scene yeah. as well, which is incredible i'm glad that they it's were like able to come out you know, yeah i know great. like because really i think it started with when the um the um, ceo or whatever in charge of the nippon or whatever he um they changed the ceo then he started to be like okay you know what let's try to bring some of these guys that listen to our music let's try to bring some money in for these old licenses and stuff you know what i mean and to ensure that we get them you know yeah. and i'm wondering do y'all do y'all have original music on your show as well i, I um so i love i love Lost Galaxy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for Galactic Chronicles, uh, when I was writing this, you know, like I said, you know, I did the whole portal situation. Um, I got inspired by 80s. Okay. So a lot of synth wave, a lot of uh, the style and grain, I added into okay. this series. So uh, copyright is one of the biggest things on YouTube. Yeah. And I try to stay away from it, but okay. I like using covers. Okay. You know? So, um, when, when I did episode zero, which was the episode with the mass Rider, I took awesome. my character to Eden on. And awesome. the song I used for that was House of the Rising Sun. But wow. it was like a synth wave of it. Because I love music. For sure. And I feel like music really elevates your storytelling, exactly. you know? Like, and, 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 you know, Power Rangers, Saban, early years, they had 
great music. Yeah, like I don't know if you knew that but Hans the Bond and Shinky Levy got their start in entertainment doing yeah. music in Israel and stuff. Yeah. And I think that's like actually really interesting, you know, but yeah. we never see like information about that, you know, because yeah. they kind of skip, they kind of like yeah. let that part go, you know, yeah. and I like... Well, because they care about the spandex and hell. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, you know, and like I'm hoping we could maybe even see them maybe come back, you know, and yeah. like... Maybe bring some, like, make their own music again, you know, yeah. for Power Rangers, you know? Yeah, like, for this, for this, you know, like, I, like, I was, I do, I did this with the mindset of, like, let's do this 80s. I got inspired by, like, Stranger Things and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, like, even the intro is, sure. is, is the Lost Galaxy thing, oh, okay. but it's a synthwave version of it. Uh, um, and, and, yeah, you know, um, the, the song I'm using for this one is an 80s, but I will music just elevates it you know and I was like putting my character we went to the, we're going to the planet of Onyx mm-hmm. you know this character is going to be around all these bad guys I need to have a great song with this you know For sure. and I, I think I, I love the choice I pick so if you come see my panel and For you sure. see the streaming of it you'll see what I pick but yeah um yeah, music music really adds to your storytelling. Exactly. Um, for the first episode I did, where the character pulls out the quasar thing. I used to be able to find that. Yeah, it's still going. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. 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 When the character pulls the quasar saber, mm-hmm. uh, I uh, the, the the initial fight before that. I used the Beastie Boys and I used oh, okay. Intergalactic Planetary. Hell yeah. And I was like, it just, it's perfect it's for this, sick. you know? So. Yeah, I mean, I'm hope, like, I, and like, I hope you can maybe even get some original songs as well, maybe yeah. like reach out to some, like, comp- like, I know there's a few bands who do like anime songs, you know, yeah, maybe you yeah. could give them to do some original stuff as well if you're Oh, down dude, I, I actually, you know, like for this one, uh, I reached out to a content creator who did like, this original track and I use it for a fight scene and I, okay. I, I dude trust me like when I when I'm like searching what's gonna go great for this or that I'm listening to music on YouTube and if I find something I comment away and I'm like hey I really like this track I was wondering if I can use it and they give me the okay I give them credit and it's it's a nice collaboration. For sure, you know, with, yeah, with no, and like, do you think you would ever consider doing like dubs of the of your show um, for like in different languages? You know, I tried. I actually got reached out by some content creators that okay. said they wanted to dub my uh, content in Spanish. I never knew what happened to it. Oh, okay. um, but you know, I'm dude. I, I I have viewers from like Mexico. I have viewers in uh, uh, different places, and and you know. It, Sometimes they message me in, sure. in their in their you know respective uh, language, and I have to use Google Translate because I like I like responding to. For people. sure, yeah, no, same here as well. Like I'm friends with a lot of Japanese um, yeah. people um, who like Japanese like Japanese tokusatsu music, and we're always talking about like, hey, what happened with this thing, or you know, like what like you know like, because I'm a there's a, fa- a guy named Masato Shimon. He, we're a big fan of him, but he just he's the guy who did Ginga Man theme. Okay. Okay. And he, he was like really popular in the 70s and like King of Man was the last ever series and although the production like producers say oh it's not him, it is him and they confirmed it too by okay. saying his age and stuff. And like I, we were like talking, you know, we want to see him come back, you know, we want to see these singers like, yeah. you know, like just sing, like coming back and doing the like performances for all the fans who, are, who love the music, you know, yeah. so. And that's why we get like Super Sentai Spirit as well as the Kamen Rider at um, Super Sentai shows at um, Budokan or at Yokohama. So. But yeah, man, and, like I really do appreciate this interview, man. Like I really do. Like I like if you want, you want to plug anything by any chance or do it uh, more for whatever just, you know. Uh, if you guys want to check out Galactic Chronicles, you can check it out at uh, our YouTube channel, We the Geeks, uh, YouTube.com backslash Surfred Surfer, and. Uh, Hope you guys enjoy it, man. It's it's. I, I try to put in the old school savant heart in it, you For know. Sure. So, yeah. Hope you guys can check that out.
All right, man. It was an honor, honor of meeting you, Danny. I absolutely been a fan of you, and I thank you for this time and effort for this 30-minute interview. We hope you enjoy. I'm Dragon Zero, and I'm the Tokusatsu Media Center. I'm with Danny from Galactic. I'm um, the um, Galactic. Um, we the yeah. Geeks. <laughs> for sure, We the Geeks. Yeah. Check them out on Instagram as well. They're on there. He's always posting with Daryl and himself. You know, they're always posting like behind the scenes. If you want to check it out, I'll leave the um, like the link in the description underneath as well as well as hashtag to help grow their brand as well. Thank so you, thank Appreciate you guys it. so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Peace. That.